Growing up in the United States, CDC and Texas would ask Dallas City volunteers to help contain Ebola. Temperatures continue to drop in Taiwan because Handu is here. We will learn more about the 17th solar term. Welcome to Dire Headlines. I'm Dennis Wu. Thank you for joining us. The United States discovered its first confirmed case of Ebola at the end of last month. Currently, nearly 80 people in Dallas, Texas, who came into contact with the patient have been quarantined. To ensure the quarantine is as humane as possible, the local CG chapter has been asked to help those quarantined purchase their daily needs. On September 30th, the United States was shocked by its first confirmed case of Ebola. The patient flew to Texas from Liberia, and all who came in contact with him have been quarantined for 21 days. To help cope with the situation, Dallas City volunteers meet up with a representative from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Deputy Director of Texas Voluntary Organizations Active in Disaster. Now we're seeing this first case uh, here in the U.S., but uh, you know, hopefully we're able to get things under control here and, and appreciate your help with that. The help which Dr. Santi Bernice spoke of is for city volunteers to help those under quarantine to purchase their daily needs. The following day, volunteers visited a local market to purchase all necessary supplies before neatly repackaging them back at the office. Volunteers also thoughtfully included Siji's instant rice and noodles and Jin's aphorisms booklets. CDC and, and Zuchi Foundation have been friends for many years now. In 2007, I actually was able to travel to uh, Taiwan with uh, the group there and uh, was very impressed with um, the work there and impressed to meet the, the master. Facing the deadly Ebola virus, both government and non-government organizations dare not let their guard down, as they do the best they can to contain the situation. Continuing on the topic of deadly disease, in today's series on extinction, we take a look at how global warming, which is caused by humans, is leading to the outbreak of infectious disease that kill over one million people every year. In essence, global warming is not only leading to the extinction of other species, but humans as well. Here's more. On September 15th of this year, the temperature in Kaohsiung hit an 82-year high of 37.6 degrees Celsius. And according to Taiwan Centers for Disease Control, between September 2nd and 8th, there were 338 new cases of dengue fever, which set a 11-year record for the highest number of cases in a week, with Kaohsiung being the hardest hit. The outbreak this year occurred some two months earlier than previous years. In the past, typically the first case didn't occur until the end of July or early August. Sometime it was as late as September, when the monsoon is over. But this year, the first case occurred by the end of May. The CDC says the dengue fever epidemic in Kaohsiung this year is already at a 10-year high. Statistics show that the average temperature and rainfall for the city were far higher than in the past 30 years. This year's rain pattern was especially unusual. If we went out and sprayed disinfectant in the morning, it would rain in the afternoon. If we went out and sprayed in the afternoon, it would rain later at night. So in essence, our prevention measures were rendered ineffective, to the point of being useless. Japan also had an outbreak of dengue fever for the first time in nearly 70 years. In just one week, the number of cases increased sevenfold. It was the same in Malaysia, where by mid-February, over 14,000 people contracted the disease, four times more than last year, while fatality rates tripled as well. If the number of areas experiencing elevated temperatures due to climate change increases, then infectious diseases that are temperature dependent, especially those transmitted by insects, are also more likely to happen. Professor Su discovered that the increase in temperatures affects how far diseases will spread. In the past, dengue fever used to occur only south of the Tropic of Cancer, but is now moving northward as the mercury rises. An increase in 1 degree Celsius in average weekly temperatures can increase the possibility of dengue fever outbreak by sevenfold, 
While increasing the outbreak of amoebic dysentery, Japanese encephalitis, melioidosis, and leptospirosis by 2 to 8 percent. Diseases and insects that help spread them are typically found around the equator. Because of the temperature change to more temperate, mid-latitude regions are becoming suitable habitats, and therefore, the insects will migrate accordingly. According to the World Health Organization, over 1 billion people contract these diseases every year, leading to the death of over 1 million people a year. Due to global warming, summer is getting longer, so mosquitoes can be around longer as well. For less developed country, the impact can be quite serious. If humans continue to ignore the signs of global warming and how it has drastically changed our world, we will end up endangering ourselves as well. This year, Diwali, which marks the beginning of the Hindu New Year, will be celebrated in mid-October. In Malaysia, Ciji volunteers organized a distribution for Indian care recipients at the Kuala Lumpur Jin Si Hall and invited 115 families to celebrate this joyous occasion. It will soon be Diwali, the Hindu festival of lights, which also marks the beginning of the Hindu New Year. To celebrate this joyous occasion, Ciji volunteers organized a distribution for 115 Indian care recipient households at the Kuala Lumpur Jing Si Hall. There's chili powder, juice and instant noodles in this gift hamper. It's very useful as this is just what we need to celebrate Diwali and Ciji already provided half. This is enough to last us a month. It is such an honor to hold a distribution for our Indian care recipients at our own home as we can take the opportunity to show them around the Jing Si Hall. Students delivered a sign language performance of the song Three Nose, followed by a short play of Tiji's Bamboo Bank era, which they presented in Tamil. They perform in Tamil so that our care recipients can better understand Siti's philosophy and ideals. Both my husband and I and my child donate three cents into the bamboo bank each day. We deposit one cent each. We will continue to do so every day. This money helped us a lot. So we want to continue the cycle of love by helping others as well. These care recipients may not be rich, but they know that their small but concerted efforts over time can make an enormous difference in the lives of those less fortunate. Stay in Malaysia, Ciji continues to help students from disadvantaged backgrounds, most recently in Johor Bahru, where 202 students from 12 middle and elementary schools received scholarships at a Ciji hosted ceremony. Despite the weather outside, not one of the 100 teachers and parents invited missed this special day with Ciji. With their education, the key to leaving poverty behind. The 202 students not only treasure the scholarships for the doors it opens, but also for the immediate benefit it brings their families. I am happy because I don't want my father to have a hard time because of me. Tuition is expensive these days, but now with the scholarship, that is not a problem. I'm happy as this will go a long way to reducing my financial burden. Ciji's New Shoots Scholarship Ceremony was handled by volunteers from Ciji's Johor Bahru branch office and the local school system. Altogether, representatives from 12 lower and middle schools gathered at the venue to commemorate this occasion. I am happy to be here, as this is a chance to help children who come from disadvantaged backgrounds. I hope this sort of assistance can continue in the future. It helps reduce the financial burden of their tuition for sure, his tuition as well as his brother's. Along with books and school uniforms, this money can help with all that. Hoping that students can learn to give as well as receive, volunteers take a moment to introduce Ciji's bamboo coin banks, 
as well as ask students to serve their parents with a cup of tea. Oh, mommy, morning. I love you. <laughs> as their children learn to express their gratitude, parents here have found renewed hope in their children's future. The New Zealand chapter of Tsuji has, for many years, worked in Auckland, bringing such services as food distributions, free health checks, and scholarship aid to the city's poor residents. Recently, volunteers share their efforts and the touch of Tsuji love with members of Auckland's Papa Toi Toi Care Association. Here's more. Thank you for for many in the audience, this is their first time seeing a sign language performance. However, by the second song, everyone soon gets into the spirit of things. Joining in, the visitors better grasp the song's meaning. City volunteers in Auckland offer regular health checks, food distributions for the poor, as well as scholarships for children in need. Such efforts have won city recognition and support in the wider community. We're very kindly invited from Papatoe Centre, so thank you so very, very much. It's such a peaceful place, it's lovely. Um, you guys do amazing work. And I know, I watched everybody, they were happy, they were really happy and interested and clapping. And, yeah, really, really great. I've loved it. I've absolutely loved coming here. Volunteers next display blankets made from PED bottles. When asked why they don't make more of the blankets, the volunteers responded that although it is good to find a use for discards, even better would be not having any discards in the first place. Like myself, I'm a support worker as well, and I know the whole concept of supporting other needy ones. I wish this organization all the very best in the future. Thank you very much. As the event comes to a close, volunteers offer each of their guests a peace charm. Thank you for giving me such a warm embrace. Staying by my side when I feel sad. And before everyone leaves, the volunteers take a moment to introduce the spirit behind Ziji's bamboo coin bank, responding to the message of love and charity for all. The visitors donate to the banks before gladly taking a bamboo bank home to feel for themselves. The solar term Hanlu, which literally means cold dew, falls on October 8th this year. During this time, the northeasterly winds increase in strength and blow away the heat of the summer. However, with the differences in temperature between day and night, one must take special care to wear or shed clothing layers as needed to not catch a cold. Also, the arrival of migratory birds as they make their way south is another signal that winter will soon be here. Here at the Lingxiao Pavilion in Kanding, Taiwan, bird watchers are admiring the wake of gray-faced buzzards above. As they make their way south, their peak arrival time is around October 10th. Thus, they are also known as National Day Birds. When the cold arrives, small animals don't appear out in the open as much, causing birds of prey who rely on the smaller animals as food to migrate south. During migration, the winds help the birds get to their destination faster. After Han Lu, literally cold dew, more migratory birds will begin their journey southward, with some stopping in Kanding's Long Luan Lake for the winter. During Han Lu, northeasterly winds will begin to move south. Residents will feel the weather changing. It will seem like four out of ten days are overcast, and there will be light sprinkles. As northeasterly wind blows south, Taiwan's Hongchun experiences strong catabatic winds. With speed levels up to 10, these winds are similar to the force of a tropical storm. This type of a wind lasts for a dozen days at a time. 
The residents here deal with it by installing windows that block out the wind. Some even install a dual pane window with shutters to help prevent the draft from coming in. Besides the wind during Hanlu, the day seems to get dark faster and leaves will fade from green to yellow. Hence the Chinese proverb, during Hanlu, grass withers. A contrast to this, however, is the flourishing of the chrysanthemum. Because temperatures are cooler, spring and summer flowers and plants will slowly wither away. The autumn season is when chrysanthemums shine. They bloom beautifully. This solar term is also when rice forms spikelets. But with the unstable temperature and unpredictable rains, the stalks easily attract blight. If rice blasts occur in the color area, it will destroy the stalk. Nutrients aren't able to reach the ear of the rice, and the panicle will yield empty spikelets. If the rice stalk has reduced grain falls, then the yield will be greatly affected. The Double Ninth Festival, which takes place on September 1st of the lunar calendar, also falls during this solar term. Many organizations will hold activities during this time to remind people to respect their elders. We can show them care during their daily routines, or make sure they wear enough layers for this winter. We hope everyone can be more patient with them, be more mindful of them. Have a chat and listen to them is showing that you care. Taking the elderly for walks outside is a good way to strengthen bonds, especially during this nice fall weather. Customarily, this is the perfect season to hike, with friends often inviting one another and taking in the sights together. If it's a private seating, then we can see the ocean. It's very comfortable. As cooler temperatures approach, it is important to prevent the onset of a cold. One should wear or shed layers as appropriate to regulate your body temperature. As keeping your feet warm is a way to prevent cold from seeping into your body, thus sleeping with covers is a must. Central Taiwan's morning temperatures will continue to drop. From Hanlu on out, Central Taiwan residents should be cautious of the temperature differences between day and night. As a drier climate comes with the autumn season here in Taiwan, colds and viruses also gain momentum. Eat foods that moisten the lungs and nourish the yin to help fight off possible colds. One of the telltale symptoms of the cold is dryness. If you feel your throat is frequently dry or sore, you can drink almond tea to alleviate the symptoms. If you find your bowel movements are on the dry side, then take some honey. In Chinese medicine, your lungs and large intestine are closely related to one another. If your bowel movements are regular, it can affect your lungs and you can easily catch a cold. The chilly autumn season can also affect a person's mental outlook. Feeling moody and melancholy are all common symptoms. To combat seasonal sadness when the sun is out, seize the moment to head outdoors for some fresh air or go fly a kite when the wind is blowing, all of which will help keep one's mental health in good shape. Some of you may still remember Chen Tuanzi, a girl from Xiamen, China, who was born with severe deformity in her knees a condition known as genu recavatum. On October 7th, the young girl underwent a final surgery to remove the pins in her right ankle, bringing her one step closer to finally being able to walk on her own. Entering the operating room with a smile on her face is Chen Tuanzhi, who suffers from congenital genu recavatum. Today, she's receiving the last of a series of corrective surgeries. I won't need to go into the operating room again. Once these pins come out, I will be able to walk again. Yes. Following a calcaneal osteotomy in September, today, Hualin Tzu Hospital Honorary Superintendent Chen Yinghe and his team are removing the pins from Tuan Zhi's ankles. After being a cast for five weeks, there has been new bone formation. So we are removing this cast, taking out the pins and putting on a new cast. Once the pins are removed, she will feel more comfortable. 
this year and underwent seven corrective surgeries during this period, which included four surgeries to correct the deformity in both knees, followed by another surgery to treat her club foot, and finally two surgeries to correct her right ankle. The cast will remain on for about another two months to ensure that her leg heals properly. All that is left now is rehabilitation. After a new cast has been put on, Superintendent Chen kneels on the floor to test the flexibility of Tuan Zhu's right leg. His humble and earnest demeanor, as well as his medical contribution, makes him a true model for all doctors to follow. In Indonesia, since meeting Tsuji, volunteer Juslati has set aside his illnesses and devoted himself to help those in greater need. Here's his story. Helping trim the senior's nails is Indonesia Tsuji volunteer Juslati. I suffered from jaundice when I was little and in 2008, I was diagnosed with typhoid fever. In 2011, I experienced a minor stroke. Jisladi was troubled by his illness and it was not until he met Siji that he realized he too can contribute to make the world a better place. I was listening to the master's teaching once and someone had asked her why do human beings fall ill and she replied that it is because of the bad karma we created in the past. From that moment on, I decided to become a vegetarian. Knowing what it's like to be ill, Jisladi is able to empathize with those of the same fate. No longer pessimistic towards life, today the volunteer is giving to help those in greater need. I'm really grateful that we are capable of doing good deeds to benefit our society. Now that I have the opportunity, I hope to give more of myself through Tsuji. In Taiwan, at the Suanghe Tsuji Recycling Station in New Taipei City, large amounts of plastics are being sorted each day by nearly 30 recycling volunteers. As plastics can be divided into many categories, these volunteers have become experts at differentiating and sorting them. Recycling volunteers, though senior in age, are quick at sorting through the piles of plastics sitting in front of them. Plastic bags with patterns, anything with tags or stickers, we cut them off. As this is a patterned plastic bag, it fetches a lower price. The white ones are more valuable, so we separate the two. Nowadays, plastics are made with many mixed materials, so it is more difficult for us to recycle them. At the Shanghe Recycling Station, some 20 to 30 volunteers are in charge of sorting the plastics each day. I am about 180 centimeters in height, and the plastic bags recycled here are stacked taller than me. Did you know that one of these bags weighs about 13 to 15 kilograms? Every two weeks, volunteers gather over 3,000 kilograms worth of plastics for the recycling dealer to collect. The plastics are compressed before being loaded onto the truck. Thanks to the efforts of these recycling volunteers, these unwanted items now have a second lease on life. At the end of today's program, we go to South Africa, where Tsuji Collegiate Youth Volunteers Measuring in Dentistry in Cape Town visited the local slums to teach children proper oral hygiene. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.